In this video, we're going to be looking at how to reduce reducible representations. On the screen, I've provided for you an example of a reducible representation for the C3V point group. Now, for your own molecules, you first need to assign point groups and then find the correct character table, but for this example, let's assume that we're in the C3V point group. This reducible representation has characters of 4, 1, and 2 corresponding to the classes or symmetry operations E, C3, and sigma V, respectively. So, these values are the character, or chi, of our reducible representation. This reducible representation is actually made up of the irreducible representations given by the Mulliken symbols A1, A2, and E. The character of these irreducible representations are the numerical values contained inside of our character table. And also, the number of operations for a given class are going to be the coefficients in front of each of those classes or symmetry operations. Those terms are used interchangeably. So in the case of our E class, there's an invisible 1. For our C3, C3 class, there's a 2. And for our sigma V, there's a 3. So this tells you all the different components of what's called our reduction formula. Our reduction formula is actually what we use to reduce this reducible representation to its individual components, which are made up of the irreducible representations from the character table. We also need to determine the order of the point group. Now the order of the point group is given by the symbol H, and it is the sum of the number of operations for each of these point groups. So for example, there's a 1 in front of E, there's a 2 in front of C3, and a 3 in front of sigma V, which gives us a total of 6. Now, the order is also equal to the sum of the squares of the first column, and the sum of the squares is going to be 1 squared plus 1 squared plus 2 squared, which is 1 plus 1 plus 4, which is also 6. So we have verified that the sum of the squares is equal to our order of our class, which again, you can just do by adding up the number of symmetry operations that total your point group. So now we have all the different components that make up our reduction formula. And again, this reduction formula is, tells us the number of irreducible representations of a given type. What does that actually mean? This means that when we utilize the reduction formula, we can figure out how many of the A1 irreducible representations there are, we can figure out how many of the A2 irreducible representations there are, and finally, how many of the E irreducible representations there are. And these should all add up to the overall reduction or the reducible representation. So let's walk through how we use this reduction formula. And I've tried to color coordinate everything to match up so that you can follow along and do your own examples in the future. So the first thing is that we need to take the sum of all of the different pieces of the reduction formula with all of these different operations. So, the first one is the number of operations in the class, and we're just going to work through systematically from E to C3 to sigma V. So the first thing, the number of operations in the E class is equal to 1. Remember there is an invisible 1 there. And we're taking the sum of all these things. So we have a 1. The next thing is that we need to multiply it by the character of the reducible representation. And the character of the reducible representation in the E class is equal to 4. And again, that is multiplied by the character of the irreducible representation. For the E class under A1, that is a 1. The next thing that we need to do is move on to our C3. So for C3, the number of operations in the class is now 2 because there's a 2 in front of E. And this is going to be multiplied again by the character of the reducible representation under C3, which is 1. And then it is multiplied by the character of our irreducible representation, which is a 1. And the next step is to do the third column, which in this case is the sigma v. So we see that the number of operations in that class is a 3. And this is going to be multiplied by the character in the reducible representation, which is a 2. And this is multiplied again by the character of our irreducible representation, which is a 1. Now, if you were to perform this calculation, you would see that 1 times 4 times 1 is 4, plus 2 times 1 times 1, which is 2, plus 3 times 2 times 1, which is 6. So this gets us to 4 plus 2 plus 6, which is a total of 12. And remember, in front of all of these, we should have 1 over the order, which is 6, which we determined over here. So if all of these add up to 12, then this means that this value is 12 divided by 6, which is equal to 2. 
This tells me that my reducible representation is actually made up of at least two A1s. And now we need to work through systematically to determine how many A2s and how many E's. So I'll walk through this so that you can get some practice. So again, we're one over the order. We're moving on to the number of operations in the class. And again, now we're in the A2 row. We see that the number of operations is again a 1. So this is a 1. And then we're going to multiply it by the character of the reducible representation, which is a 4, which is multiplied by the character of the irreducible representation in the character table, which is 1. Then we move over to C3, which is a 2. Remember, there's a 2 in front of the C3, multiplied by the 1 in the reducible representation, which is multiplied by the 1 in the A2 character table. And then we're going to add that to 3 for our value of the number of operations. And then we're going to multiply that by 2 from our reducible representation. And then finally, it is multiplied by negative 1 for our irreducible representation. So now if we were to take a look at this, we'd see that 1 times 4 times 1 is 4, plus 2 times 1 times 1 is 2, plus 3 times 2 times negative 1 is actually negative 6. And these values all add up to 0 over 6, which is the same thing as 0. So for this, then I can come down and say, okay, well, there aren't any A2s in my reducible representation. So now what we can do is do the final step, which is going to be for our E. And again, we always begin with 1 over the order, which is 6. Multiply that by the 1 in front of the E. Then we multiply by the 4 from the reducible representation. Then we multiply by 2, because now we have a character of 2 in our irreducible representation. And then we move on to the C3, which has a 2. For the number of operations, we see that there is a 1 in the reducible representation for the character. And then finally, there is a negative 1 for our character in our irreducible representation. So now we move on to the final one, which is our sigma v's. I see that there is a 3 for the number of operations. There is a 2 in my character for my reducible representation. And then finally, there is a, actually a zero for my character in my irreducible representation. So now if I were to add all these up, I see that one times four times two is eight, plus two times negative one is negative two. And this is gonna all be zero because we have our zero in there. And this gets me six divided by six, which is equal to one. And this tells me that there is one E present in our reducible representation. Now, importantly, all of these should actually add up to our reducible representation. Because again, these are our irreducible representations that make up this overall value. And if we were to write each of these out, remember we're in our C3V, we have our E we have two C3s, and we have three sigma Bs. If we were to add these up, we should have, remember, there are two A1s. So we should have two A1s, and we should have a single E. And again, this came from using the reduction formula to determine what irreducible representations actually make up our reducible representation. So all we would go through is put in these characters. For A1, it's easy because they're all 1s. And then for E, we see that there's a 2, a negative 1, and a 0. And if you were to take the sum of these, 1 plus 1 plus 2 is equal to 4. 1 plus 1 plus negative 1 is equal to 1. And then 1 plus 1 plus 0 is equal to 2, which, if you'll notice, is the exact same as the values in our original reducible representation. And you can use this for all kinds of things. In our class, we're going to use it to make molecular orbital diagrams. We're going to use it to figure out vibrational spectroscopic modes. And all we're doing when using the reduction formula is figuring out how many of each of these irreducible representations make up the reducible representation. And that's how you use the reduction formula.